Hi everyone, okay, so today I'm going to do a wee lesson on voltage and current in series and parallel circuits. So this is the third lesson from the electricity unit. Uh, so what I'm going to talk through is what's meant by series and parallel. So I know we've come across these terms before when I've been talking about how to connect your voltmeters and ammeters. But we're going to look at what that means um, for other components as well. What would it mean about two lamps connected in series or two lamps connected in parallel? We're look at what that means about current in these types of circuits and voltage across the components in these types of circuits. So I'm just going to go through some slides. I'm also going to use um, the FET website that I've used before. Remember, there's a link to this on Teams as well. But just uh, give me a message on Teams if you're not sure how to find that. Okay, so a couple of diagrams here. This is showing a series circuit. This is showing a parallel circuit. So if I was to replace that lamp with an ammeter, then that should look familiar to you. We've got a current uh, going around our circuit, going through the lamp, and then going through the ammeter. And we know that's how ammeters need to be connected to measure current. You need to take a reading of the current passing through them. So that would be connected in series. So this is just two lamps connected in series with each other. And over here, we've got two lamps connected in parallel. So if I was to place this one with a voltmeter, that would look familiar to you. Maybe a wee bit different because we tend to draw uh, voltmeters connected a wee bit more narrowly. So I have the wires going up kind of next to that top lamp. But remember, this is just wire. There's not actually needing to be a bend there. In reality, wires are all bent all over the place anyway. So it wouldn't really matter if this was connected here or here. It's just different parts of the wire. So we've got series and parallel circuits. Be a clearer definition for it now that we're thinking about other components, not just ammeters and voltmeters. If we think about the current going around this circuit, the current only has one path. There's only one route. The current has to go through both of these lamps to get from one terminal to the other terminal of the battery or the cell. Here it's different because at this junction, the current has a choice. It can either go along this top branch through one lamp or go through the bottom branch and go through that other single lamp. So it's a wee bit different. Um, the individual electrons, like we'll see in the, on the FET website in a wee second, aren't being affected by um, both lamps as well. So this is series and parallel. Uh, we'll look at current first of all. So if I bring up this FET website, is it here? So here's one I made earlier. Um, you can create this yourself, remember, all your components down the left-hand side. And I've connected a couple of ammeters too. Right now, both of those circuits are identical. I think this one looks different, but this switch is open. So this whole bottom section isn't doing anything just now. All I've got in both of them is a battery, single lamp, and an ammeter showing the current is 0 0.9 amps. If I click on values on the right-hand side, it'll show you the values of other things as well. So the battery, it says, is providing 9 volts. And the lamp has a resistance of 10 ohms. So these numbers should make sense to us as well, based on what we know about Ohm's law, which is voltage is equal to current times resistance. And 0 0.9 times 10 it gives us our 9 volts. So all is well. Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, is change these circuits by adding another lamp. Well, on this left-hand side here, I'm going to add it in series. The right hand side, we're going to add it in parallel. So just to see uh, the effect that that's going to have. I'm just going to get rid of the values for a second. It makes it a bit easier to see, I think. So if I open this, if you just click on the junction, my pair of scissors appears. OK, so maybe you can do this as well. You can just pause the video if you want to uh, get the FET website open and create this circuit as I'm doing it as well. So if I drag this lamp up and connect it in series, and see what happens. So my current has decreased. Again, from Ohm's law, that tells us something about resistance. I'm going to get to resistance a lot more in uh, next lesson. But since we've seen Ohm's law, let's just think what that tells us. So the current has gone down from 0 0.9 to 0 0.45. The voltage has stayed the same. It was the same battery. So a smaller current must mean we had a larger resistance. Well, yeah, that kind of makes sense. We had a 10 ohm and now we've got another 10 ohm next to it. But it's how they're connected that's really important because the current has to go through both 10 ohm resistors or 10 ohm lamps. 
So it's having to go through a total of 20 ohms of resistance, and that's what's affecting the current. Okay, over here, got my original circuit. I'm just going to close this switch, and that's going to give the current a different option. And that's going to give this whole second path, uh, make it complete. So we've got a route for the current. So I close that. Okay, so it's a wee bit of a different change here. The current's gone from 0 0.9 up to 1.8. So by Ohm's law again, if the current has increased, that must mean that the resistance has decreased. So why did adding another lamp decrease the resistance? Well, we didn't just add a lamp though, we added this whole other path. So if you go back to the kind of the car analogy, everyone's trying to get around the same road. If you open up another road, then you've got a whole other route for that current. And um, we'll get, like I said, into resistance a bit more next time. I just want you to kind of see what's happening with the current in the series and parallel circuits. So the fact that the current's gone up, that tells us something about resistance. But really, I want to look at the current at different points in our series circuit and the current at different points in our parallel circuit. So in our series circuit, we know the current has to be the same at every point. Back to the cars, you can only go as fast as the car in front of you, they're all moving um, simultaneously. Here it's different because at this point here the current's got an option. So you can maybe see it from the diagram, but if I open up this circuit, I'll be able to add some ammeters. Put my second one down here. Okay, so if I put an ammeter in the top kind of loop here. Okay, I've gone back to 0 0.9 because obviously the second bit isn't connected anymore. I want to connect it with an ammeter. doesn't matter if I put my ammeter there or over here because this section is just one continuous loop. So it's like a wee series section of my overall parallel circuit here. So connecting that. Okay, so you can see the overall current is 1.8, but the current through each branch is only 0 0.9. That's where the current comes together again here to create that total 1.8. So what we need to take away from this then is that the current in the series circuit is the same at all points. In a parallel circuit, current drawn from the battery, so this overall current up here, is going to be larger than our individual currents through the branches. But there is a relationship they need to add up to make that total current. Okay, the reason, like I touched on briefly there, that this current is larger is because we've actually given a whole other path. We've de decreased the resistance, sorry. Um, not only have you given a whole other path, the current only has to go through one lamp. So the current in this top branch only goes through one lamp. The current that's chosen the bottom path only goes through one lamp. Whereas here, all of our current has to go through that 20 ohms resistance, both resistors. Okay, I've just got on my slides a note, if you are taking notes or want to take a note of this. <clears throat> so that's our kind of key points. Current is the same at all points in a series circuit, splits in a parallel circuit, but the total current drawn from the battery is the sum of the current through each branch. So if you add up your individual currents, it has to be the same as that total current. Okay, so let's... Uh, Oh, before we look at voltage, and um, this is just a kind of drawing, circuit drawing example of um, what I've written down there. A1 is just standing for an ammeter, so ammeter number one, ammeter number two, ammeter number three. And this is our series circuit with the one path. So the current would be the same at all points. And we can write that by saying that the reading on ammeter one would be the same as A2 and the same as A3. Here we've got a parallel circuit. Um, and this A1, this is before the split, so this would be the total current. A2 is after a split, and so is A3. Could have positioned A3 anywhere after that split. But A1 is going to be bigger than A2 or A3, because A1 is that total current drawn from the battery, and A2 and A3 are after it's split. So we could write that as A1 is equal to A2 plus A3. Okay. The one last thing I actually want to show you on current, you may think A2 and A3, or you may be wondering, are they always going to be the same? So they are in that example that I've got here. I've got 0 0.9 and 0 0.9. 
if I replace this lamp with a resistor, we'll just see what effect that has on nanometers. So now the overall current has changed, which means the overall resistance has changed. And that's because I've added a resistor with a different resistance to the lamp. But if you look at the current now, 1.8 and 0.9, that rule you've just copied or you've just seen still applies. The individual currents add up to make that total current, but they're not the same anymore. And that's because the resistance of each path of each branch isn't the same. So the current, when it's got this decision here at the split, it's going to prefer the easier route. Okay, just like if there was a split in the road, I've had two options of getting to school. I'm going to pick the road that's easier. However, it gets to a point where if all the other cars are picking that road because it's slightly shorter um, or slightly easier, then that's going to get busier and it might get to the stage where I know that I'm actually quicker going the slightly longer road or the slightly more complicated road because it's going to be quieter. So all of the current isn't going to try and fight its way through. Um, I can tell by the numbers that that resistor must have a smaller resistance because more of the current is going that path, so it's picking the easier route. Um, it's also, if you're spotting the numbers, double the current. Whoops, so that tells me it's half the resistance. And it's five ohms. Okay, but like I said, I'll get into resistance more next time. I just wanted to highlight that although these two current values have to add up to the supply, that doesn't mean that they're always the same. It just means that total current coming together to give uh, that maximum reading up the top there. Okay. So if we look at voltage now, remember our definition of voltage is the energy given to each coulomb of charge. Um, so if we think about the voltage supplied by that battery, and I want to think about the energy uh, involved with each lamp and what that means about the voltage across each of them. So back to the website, I've got a voltmeter. And if I connect, it's getting a bit busy, let's get rid of the values. We already know the voltage, don't we? It was 9 volts, but let's just connect the voltmeter just for fun. OK, so it's saying 9 volts. So we've got our battery providing 9 volts of uh, 9 joules of energy to each coulomb of charge. And if I take a reading across each lamp here, I'm getting 4.5 volts and 4.5 volts. OK, so we're noticing that they're not getting that full voltage across each of them. But if voltage is to do with energy, that should kind of make sense. They can't both have this full energy. The energy from the battery is being supplied to each of these lamps. So they're sharing it. They're receiving 4.5 each, 4.5 volts each. So in a series circuit, the voltage across each component is adding to the supply voltage, 4.5 and 4.5. If I replace this with a resistor, Let's just see if the split is the same. I'll make my resistor. You can do this well. See if you tap on it, you can play about. So right now it's got the same resistance as the lamp. That's not going to show me anything very exciting. If I drop this one to five and connect my resistor. OK, so the overall current has changed because my overall resistance has changed. If I look at voltage, voltage of the supply is still 9 volts because not actually changed the battery. The voltage across this lamp is 6 volts. And the voltage across the resistor is 3 volts. They both still add up to our 9 volt supply, but the split of that, the shade of that has changed. So the resistance of this is less, which means it takes less energy to overcome that. We've got more energy being distributed across the lamp, so we've got a bigger voltage. Some people ask here, how does the voltage know? How does the current know? How does the circuit know to give more energy to the lamp? How does it know what the voltage across uh, the resistor would be? But that's kind of like, if I go back to the potential kinetic energy um, idea, if I lift my pen and give it some potential energy, if I drop it, it's going to turn into kinetic energy. Halfway, it's lost half of its potential energy to kinetic energy. You don't ask the pen, how do you know um, that you're only halfway? If I lift it three feet after one foot, 
it's only lost a, a third of that potential energy to kinetic energy. You don't ask the pen, well, how did you know that you that there's three foot? It's because you gave it that energy when you lifted it in the first place. So maybe it's harder because we're not um, as sure of the process of how that energy is created in the cell to begin with. But there's still that energy that was involved in creating the cell. That's the energy those electrons have to give. So they're going to lose all of that energy when uh, they go around our circuit. And it depends on the resistance, how that's distributed. But the rules for today, the bits I really want you to stay away from this, is the idea that our total supply voltage in our series circuit is shared across components, sometimes equally, if the resistance is equal, sometimes not. If we go to the parallel circuit now, just get... okay, and measure the voltage of the battery, and get 9 volts. Same battery, remember they were the same circuit initially before I started playing about with resistances. If I measure the voltage across my top components, now resistor, but so it's 9 volts. If I measure the voltage across this bottom lamp, it's 9 volts. So that may look a wee bit unusual to you at first, but if we think about our definition of voltage again, the energy given to each coulomb of charge it's different electrons, it's different charges that are going through the top and the bottom branch. So that energy isn't having to be shared. You think about the individual coulombs having the energy, then they're only giving it to that single resistor, or that single lamp that they're going through. So by our definitions, that actually makes perfect sense. And it all ties in perfectly with Ohm's law as well, like you're going to see in possibly the next video. So we've got the voltage across each branch is the same and it's equal to the voltage from our supply, from our battery. Whereas in the series circuit, because of the way they're connected, the energy had to get shared, so our voltage was different. So I think about how to sum up those rules, back to my slides. Okay, in a series circuit, the voltage is shared across components. The supply voltage, that total voltage of the battery, is the sum of the individual components. So that 9 volts was the 4.5 plus the 4.5, or the 3 plus the 6. Um, in a parallel circuit, the voltage across each branch is equal and also equal to the supply voltage. So you always get 999, or if we had a 6 volt battery, you'd have 66. Um, next page, I've just got the diagrams showing that. This looks a wee bit messy, obviously connecting voltmeters in our circuit. We've got a lot going on here, but we've just got that simple series circuit. Here's a voltmeter connected across the cell, and it says VS. That just stands for voltage supply or supply voltage. V1, first voltmeter reading across our first component, and V2. So because we've got a series circuit, the supply voltage would be equal to V1 plus V2. Here, because we've got a parallel circuit, remember it's the energy given to each coulomb of charge, but it's different electrons, different charges going through each branch. So actually, they still have that full energy. So whatever our supply voltage is, that's going to be voltage across our top branch and equal to the voltage across our bottom branch. OK, nearly done. Just one more slide I want to show you. And that's this one here. So this is a kind of combination of the two. If you look at these top two lamps, they are in series with each other. This current has to go through both of those. So if they were both 10 ohms again, it'd have to go through 10 and 10, which would be effectively going through 20 ohms of resistance. The bottom one, it's just single cell, but a single uh, lamp, sorry, but it is in parallel with these two because the current still has a choice here to either go through the top two or go through the bottom. In terms of resistance, like I said, get into that more later on, but if this, if they were all of equal resistance, this top path would be twice as difficult. So you'd actually have half the current choosing this top path and more of it choosing this bottom. But still, the current going through each branch would have to add up to the total current uh, drawn by the battery. Just to give a wee example with numbers, what we could work out just now. 
not going to work out too much. We could do Zoom's law to work out quite a few things, um, which we will do. But let's just look at voltage just now. If my pen cooperates. There we go. So we've got six volts from the supply. What that would mean is from there, connect a voltmeter to there, would also be six volts. Because they are in series with each other, though, that means that voltage, that energy, would be shared. So across each, what's going to be messy is three volts. On our bottom branch, though, the energy given to each coulomb of charge, we think electrons have a root that avoids that top branch completely, like this. And the voltage across this bottom branch would be equal to the supply, would be the full 6 volts. To work out current, we would need to know some values for resistance. We would need to use Ohm's law in a slightly more complex way than we've done before. So we will save that for another day. Then, but if for today you can kind of accept this idea that there would be a smaller current in that top branch, then that's great. Um, and definitely this idea that whatever our current is going through, this top branch here and this one here, when they reconnect at this point, those individual values have to add up to our complete current. OK, so next time I see you, we're going to look at uh, resistance in series and parallel circuits. We've talked about it a wee bit today, but just what does that really mean then? If you add another component in series, what are you doing to the overall resistance? What effect does that have on the current? If you add a component in parallel, what effect does that have? Um, and what about if you do a kind of combination of the two like I did in that last page? Um, we can use Ohm's law um, to work out our values with that. OK, right. Um, I'll see you next time.